Why are we obsessed with entertainment? The questions seem to be presented more in the format of why do we seek out entertainment more than we do education? So that's how I'm going to address this question and I'm going to do it first by reading a paragraph which I wrote down on the computer screen. We as human beings have feelings and experiences we perceive to be positive and negative. The job of entertainment is to induce the positive ones and distract ourselves from or outright eliminate the negative ones. In other words, entertainment makes you feel better in some way. The increase in knowledge due to education may improve your mood in light of it making you smarter, but for the majority of people this is a negligible improvement compared to that caused by entertainment. Facts are not funny. They do not hug you when you are feeling down, and they can't relate to you emotionally. So to answer it simply, we favour entertainment because it does more to improve our moods. It does more to make us feel better. And I'm going to look at the factors which could shape our perceptions of education. So every weekday you get up and go to school. You are required by law to go to this building. Now here in the UK, in primary schools, there's more flexibility. You don't have um, a timetable of lessons or anything like that. You just have a certain amount of time until your first break, then a certain amount of time till lunchtime, then everything afterwards. And during those three blocks of time, anything that you can study is really up to the teacher and could vary from day to day. In high school that's not the case. You normally get like hour-long segments of lessons uh, which repeats every week. You know, they're different from day to day but from week to week they're exactly the same. Now what could happen within those lessons from week to week is could be completely different but that's not the point. The point is you have a schedule. In primary school and in high school you also get homework. But the difference is in high school, or at least in my high school at least, even the homework was scheduled. You had to do certain amounts of homework, you had to do certain types of homework on certain days. Refusal to do homework is punishable by detention. Talking in class is punishable by detention, less and less as time goes on, but still quite bad even by the end. And even that's got better over time, I mean we used to have corporal punishment, but we still have punishments if we talk in class. That's the point here, that the key word is punishment. Here's the most important part concerning punishment. Certain teachers can be more strict than others, which means that later on in high school course choices could be made on the basis of avoiding scary teachers, if you like, as opposed to picking courses which genuinely interest you. And that becomes a very big problem. When it comes to the actual teaching, little is done to actually engage interest. You're simply meant to be quiet and listen, but they do nothing to actually encourage you to listen. One of two teaching styles which I classify in a way tend to be used. The first is lecture and notes, which means the teacher talks and you write down what he says, or, he writes, or you write down what he puts on the board. And the second is lecture and questions, where first he talks about the material and then asks you questions and then you do certain questions in your textbook or whatever. Occasionally you do get stuff like video and um, PowerPoint and things like that, but very rarely, certainly extremely rarely in comparison. Now when it comes to the practical applications, Andrew said that was a problem, people didn't really understand it in America, but that was never really a problem for me or really any of my friends where I am, but they don't always appear and that is a problem. And then I think is probably the most important one so far. There are actually groups of people, cliques, at school which discourage academic excellence because you get called a geek or a nerd or you know something like that and you have all these people that bully you if you do too well or you know if you focus on working rather than on socialising and stuff like that. It just serves to discourage your academic performance, discourage learning. And finally, on top of all this, you have to want to learn. Now that, that could either be done by the teachers engaging you and, and interesting you in the, you know, getting you interested in the material or you just naturally being interested in the material. Because if that's not the case, then it's going to be much more difficult for you to learn. And everything I've just mentioned works in combination to produce this really quite stressful environment. It's seen as a chore to go to school. It's not seen as a good thing or anything like that. People don't consider that, you know, this is 
their future that they're working towards here by going to this school. They just see it as this building where you just go and you do all this work. And, you know, that's the, that's the problem as I see it. And if you bear in mind that education's reputation is built on this whole idea of a school, which, as I've said before, is really quite a stressful and depressing environment, can you really blame people wanting to seek out entertainment when they're not at school rather than go look for educational channels? I mean, personally, you know, I do like, you know, learning new things, but I've never, ever voluntarily searched for any educational channels on the TV and actually decided to watch any of them. I might have browsed through them while looking for something else, but never actually stayed there and watched them. Ever. When I get out of any learning environment like that, the very last thing I want to think about is, you know, more learning. I just want to unwind with some Simpsons or Futurama on Sky One or something like that. So that, you know, that should, that should go at least some way towards explaining the figures that Andrew came up with. If you think I'm wrong or if you think I've missed something, feel free to let me know in the comments section. But to round this off, I'm also going to go into some detail about entertainment in comparison to education. Entertainment can take place anywhere and really it can also happen in combination with education as well, hence uh, edutainment as Andrew said, which I actually perceive as a very very good thing because it makes education more interesting and by extension more engaging. Entertainment serves to relieve stress. There are no obligations, you don't have to do it. Okay, I mean people can ask you to come along to the cinema and stuff like that but you don't really you don't absolutely have to do it by law. There might be strict behavioural rules for the audience to follow, like you might have to stay quiet during the performance or something like that, or there might be none at all. It might be a metal concert where they have mosh pits and walls of death and things like that. <laughs> something I know about. It's presented in multiple different formats in multiple different mediums. It could be the, cin the cinema, the stage, Anything is a, is a form of escapism, getting away from all the pressures of day-to-day -day life. And here's what I think is the most important thing about entertainment. If you take a look at things like um, actors, you know, pe people like actors, musicians, these are people who have no qualifications but yet make millions of pounds or dollars a year. In other words, the message it's sending to people is that you know, you don't have to work well in school and still earn millions of pounds, millions of dollars. I mean, if you compare this to scientists, there was a good video by Concordance about, you know, how to become a scientist, which basically says you have to spend decades of your life researching and, you know, going into education, getting PhDs, stuff like that, to get a salary and fame which just pales in comparison to most actors and or musicians have made it big. In other words, entertainment outlines a quick fix, easy way out for this society. So that, I can see how that might be quite appealing to people as well. And if you have doubts about what I've just said, think of how many people have learned how to play guitar and stuff like that during their teenage years. I, I don't, like, I th I'd imagine that the majority of the people I know who are my age either know how to play the guitar and are still learning or are in a band or st something like that. Certainly most of my close friends are in a band and quite a lot of these people have the ambition to make it big one day. And also look at how many creative people there are within our own community here on YouTube. I mean you've got Cody who makes all those video songs, you've got uh, Tool Time, he, he did the music for certainly at least one of his videos that I've seen. There's also Andromeda's Wake who wrote the video for his uh, Welcome to the Universe series. There's me, there's my Axis stuff. And it just goes on, there's all this creativity going on. Creative pursuits are really, really big. So I probably could have done a better job, but you know, because of the time lag I really just had today, otherwise I was holding up everyone for pretty much a whole week. Or I don't know, we might find a way around it, but still. I wanted to get this done before Monday, before Moza would have to do his response. So I hope what I've said is somewhat satisfactory for you, Andrew, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.